Welcome to Tennis Insider Club. I am Borja Duran, and together with my partner, Caroline Garcia, here is where tennis stories and life conversations intersect. Join us as we uncover the untold personal journeys of the icons of the court. From laughter to life lessons, it's all here. Thank you very much. A very big pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Not only because you're one of the best players of the last decade, but also because I think you bring a lot of interesting things to tennis. And I'd like to start knowing a bit more about your beginnings with, with tennis. Can you share a bit how you started with the racket? My mom is a tennis coach. Mm -hmm. So since I was born, probably she was taking me with her on a little yeah. car for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so basically she was taking with me and little by little like this, I start to be on the court. Mm -hmm. Then I start to walk. So I start to walk on the court. And then maybe I start to just troop other kids, taking the balls, taking mm -hmm. the rackets and little by little. I start sometimes to hit by myself and I start to enjoy it. My father used to be a boxer. My grandpa used to be a Romanian wrestler. Mm -hmm. And when they were taking me to the boxing gym or Greco-Romanian gym, I was not enjoying. <laughs> I was doing like something, some effort, mm -hmm. but I was. I wanted to leave. I was not enjoying. And uh, when they were bringing me to the tennis club, to the mom, I was enjoying a lot, and mm -hmm. I wanted to stay there all day and. Little like little by little like this that was it. You were looking more for something with a game, with a competition. Or? I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I was thinking I fell in love with the game. <laughs> but now you were quite, you were quite good, I guess. As uh, well. But <laughs> now as an adult, I think I like it much more because in tennis there was plenty of kids yes so it was more interesting and when they were taking me to the box gym or greek romanian gym there was already adults mm -hmm. and uh, i was not enjoying because all of them big uh, <laughs> full of hair uh, the, the sweat everywhere <laughs> and of course me as a five years old or six years old kid of course, you were scared uh, yes i was more scared than I can uh, imagine why, yeah. enjoying so of course if you switch and you maybe you bring me to the boxing with full of kids in a group and then you bring me to the tennis only where is adults, maybe it will be opposite. Mm -hmm. so. so maybe after tennis you can try some boxing again. <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> That's interesting. And then you went, I guess, into the... You were pretty good at it, no? And you started... Mm, yeah, and little, little by little I start to like it by myself mm -hmm. and I start to enjoy it. And that's it. You had a pretty successful juniors career, no? It was not bad, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I mm -hmm. didn't have plan B. Was the only so for you was tennis or tennis? Yeah, tennis or tennis. I, I was not even having plan B study or okay. something. So I didn't really study. And you did a big move to Spain at 17, 18 years old? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was already playing a lot so i was traveling anyway a lot i was not having much time to practice in moscow because you had tournament and next week is another tournament mm -hmm. and to go to moscow is, was too far and because of the weather conditions anyway we were often practicing somewhere outside like i was doing pre-seasons in IMG academy okay. in the past quite almost every year and then, yeah, when uh, I started to work with Fernando, I started to be more in Europe. I started to practice more, especially during the summer, where all the European tournaments more, yes. more in Barcelona. And like this, it starts everything uh, when I was 18. But yeah, but normally since 13, 14, I was already I was in one moment, I was practicing in Justine in Nina Academy. Okay, also. in Belgium? Yes, in Belgium. When I was Different weather. I early <laughs> surf weather out there. <laughs> when I was 13, maybe something like that. Okay. So you are a citizen of the world, like mm, a tennis player enough, most of the time. Enough, and how is like this process of going from being a good junior to like turning into a pro and already realizing that you can live from, it, from this? Is like high pressure or at the moment you're still young and you don't think it too much? I think it's a personal journey mm -hmm. and uh, I can say only from my case. Of course, when I was more or less good at juniors, 
uh, they start to say many good things mm -hmm. and uh, in one moment the I pressure guess, begins no right? pressure no in one moment i guess you start to believe also in these mm. things that you're uh, okay miracle <laughs> miracle or whatever <laughs> and stuff like that and you start to be yeah. a bit uh, mm -hmm. Cookie a bit out of <laughs> out of like uh, out of the world, you know that you are better than the others. Mm -hmm. And I had a little bit like this when I was transitioning to yeah. a pro. So in the end, success got you a bit. <laughs> success, no. <laughs> I mean, people, people, people idea come, everything yeah. got me a bit. But then, uh, the, when you start <laughs> to turn pro, uh, in the end, the life show you reality, yeah. and then they bring you back. <laughs> and then I was lucky that I was able to take it in the right way, mm -hmm. and that's it. And then when I start to grow a lot and improve, and Fernando helped mm -hmm. me a lot with your coach Fernando it's uh, been a longer relation and now on tour we can see sometimes many players change after a couple of yeah. years or like as soon as results are not coming anymore yeah. and I always have a lot of respect for that and I believe like it's very important and it's it's great to see your relationship with your with your coach going through some tougher moments some yeah. great moment last year with Monte Carlo title and it's, it's that was a nice one. Yeah. It, yeah, it was nice one, and I think everyone was super happy for for you guys. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think me and Fernando is <laughs> it's a kind of a relationship that there's you know a little percent of the world when they found the love of the <laughs> of life <laughs> and they have super connections. So I guess it's happened with us on ten, in a tennis wise, and I mean first of all. The 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 amazing things that he's very loyal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he had many possibilities to change for a better players or to have a bigger salary from the players. And mm -hmm. he was even when I was injured and I was not playing, uh, and um, he was saying no to to all of them. Then uh, the most important thing for him is never about the money, never about the mm -hmm. fame. Uh, he's super motivated by himself, and it's tough to find uh, in a life. Uh, people in, like yes, yeah, yeah. in general. I mean, it, it, just normal people as a friend. It's tough mm -hmm. to find when they when they are not trying to get something from you. Yeah, and on top of that, they give a lot from them without mm -hmm. anything, without asking something mm -hmm. back. And so it's tough to find people like this in life and even tougher <laughs> in tennis. Yeah. And yeah. somehow, yeah, I was lucky that I found it in a, a good, good one. Yeah, <laughs> so a perfect combination because it works a lot in tennis and it mm -hmm. works really well outside the court because outside the court we have also always a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Good relation helps for yeah, healthy. At <laughs> least I have healthy relationship somewhere. <laughs> 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 no, you do it. That's, and you talk about uh, injuries. You had uh, no, a couple of uh, complicated injuries. Can you share a bit more? How is it for, uh, for an athlete, especially at the younger stage of the, his career, mm. to have something like uh, this? I had a stress fracture in the uh, lower back. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that, and I was keep playing okay. for maybe one month or something till the pain was not going away. And it was mm -hmm. getting worse and worse. And then we did an MRI, and it was stress fracture. So and then I stopped. And then what happens there? Nothing. A bit of <laughs> depressed, a bit of reality. And the funny thing I remember and that they were saying, oh, it's okay, you will come back stronger. And I was like, completely <laughs> almost crying, uh, like, whoa, whoa, what the bullshit you are saying, come back stronger. If everybody is practicing every day and I have to be for three months in a corset, don't uh, like fucking lie to me. Uh, you were having doubts that you could come back at the same... Uh, I mean, I was not having doubts, but for sure, uh, <laughs> not stronger. Not stronger. <laughs> uh, when you're not doing one, uh, when you don't move one finger for two months, it's impossible to come back stronger. <laughs> And uh, when everybody knows, it's okay, come back from us. So, and then I was like, okay, thank you. Mm, yeah, I can feel who is real, who is not. And yeah, good time uh, to learn some things. Mm -hmm. And looks like I didn't learn nothing after the first <laughs> injury. Because the second 
came very fast. Okay. Then uh, I broke I broke my wrist. Okay. But it was my fault. Mm -hmm. I hit the door a couple of times <laughs> and I broke the wrist. <laughs> and at least after that I learned something. And then when I come back from the wrist, then when I start to be more free, I start to play better. And somehow I start to do well. And in the end, I finished the year almost. So it was 2017, I finished mm -hmm. 30 or something mm -hmm. in the world. Then 18, I start, I was 30 something in the world. I got back injury. I went out of top 100. Mm -hmm. Then 2019, I start 100 something. Then in the middle of the, of the season happened mm -hmm. the wrist injury when I was 100 maybe or just yeah. top 100. And then when I come back, I think in something like maybe for Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. And then when I started to play better and better, and I finished almost top 20 mm -hmm. by the end of uh, 2019. And do you think that injury gave you like more freedom or were you feeling different when you came uh, back on court? Yes, the second injury looks like teach me some something uh, i mean but i forgot already that feeling <laughs> we <But> all do <laughs> I, f i forgot but in one moment i had a very clear feeling like how lucky i am just to be able to play uh, like doesn't matter the result doesn't matter doesn't matter anything how lucky i am that uh, i'm able to play i'm able to play every week mm -hmm. i'm able again to travel and uh, like I have to be really grateful and I'm super lucky person doing something that I was dreaming about and I had that feeling very clear and that helped me a lot kind of to release mm -hmm. and I start to yeah play more free and I was in the end able to finish in highest rank ever before. Same story as you in 2022 almost, no? Same so I think a lot of players sometimes when they realize they are out of competition, then they come back and they are like, they all, you only see the positive and you have like this expectation because you come from lower rank probably. And you play just because you love playing tennis, no? not because of people's expectations or... Mm, I don't know, but I think only few maybe, I don't know. No, I mean, it's personal yeah, because many sure. people, they don't learn in the end. But I was also kind of a lucky in the second injury because most of the people, uh, they were saying, not saying, but like that I know, not uh, spectators, yeah, the people that uh, I knew who was maybe sometimes helping me or something when I was playing well, during the second injury, they all kind of, okay, your career is done. They gave yeah. up on you. Yeah. And, because it, of and it's also kind of give me, in a good way, more appreciation when I start to play. Like, I don't need to prove nothing to anyone. I'm playing only for me and that's it. And no one cares. Yeah. The reality is that no, no one cares. And then, as you say, you finished the year top 20 or close to the top yeah. 20. And since then, you've been one of the most constant players. No, I think since once you reached top 10, you almost never left. You were actually uh, for a really mm. little time. You've been yes. almost always there, being uh, one of the best players uh, out there. How do you manage to be like this I consistent in such a competitive environment? I don't know, because... So I was not feeling <laughs> that way <laughs> all these years. I was feeling that there was some good moments, some bad moments, a lot of mistakes that I was doing and it was not helping me at all. I would say last year from US Open, I started to feel more yeah. consistently. I started to mm -hmm. feel that, okay, now I feel that my level is somewhere around mm -hmm top 10 that now I feel that yes with my game I feel that I'm at, at this level because before I was still feeling that or something was too perfect like <laughs> like like just perfect scenario like I don't know maybe I was not doing something right 
but somehow in mm-hmm. and I was end up winning tournaments or some players they were getting injury and they couldn't perform mm-hmm. like Nada, Rafa, Dominic, Sasha and they were not performing so three spots also was uh, free mm-hmm. and always kind of uh, everything was going a bit in a better scenario for me but not because you I was doing it. yeah not because I deserve it or I was doing something extremely re- perfect or something and but yeah like closer last year from US Open I started to feel that, that I start to feel level wise my game is hmm. finally somewhere there and do you think with your game style you know like uh, you're a very aggressive player going for it sometimes it takes a lot of risk and uh, maybe it did happen to affect your results sometimes or you always believe in your game and you won't go no. I'm quite I'm quite yeah. interested by by that <laughs> no. question because I can relate <laughs> <laughs> no because uh, I play aggressive uh, when I feel everything is fine when I feel that today is not my day then I'm getting too tight and I start to push the ball <laughs> so I, it's, there is no middle I start to play too passive uh, sometimes uh, without hitting at all so uh, and which way works better for you when you're <laughs> aggressive i mean of course when you feel the ball and when you play aggressive it works uh, the best way but also depends on the player with the okay. players uh, like daniel or who knows how to defend well or who knows how to break your rhythm of course you need to wait mm-hmm. because if you try to play aggressive you in the end you end up missing so with those players you need to play rally and you need to have enough patience to wait for the right moment to start to attack and with some players who also play aggressive there is more okay who is gonna start the first the first one who is gonna start to shoot yeah and then the other that player is taking the lead normally with this kind this kind of players you don't have much rallies during the match and then some matches when you're trying to hit and you feel you're missing more than like, yes, you start to, <laughs> yeah, you start to get tight and you start, uh, then I start to push the ball. <laughs> but the problem I'm not running like Medvedev to... No. <laughs> I mean, no, no one is really running like him. And like being a very aggressive player takes a crazy amount of, of focus and in a game like tennis, it's not easy to always stay like, yeah, calm and, uh, and confident. How do you handle all these emotions? Uh, because we're, we're I'm not handling, you can see. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm struggling. <laughs> no, but it's true. It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot mm-hmm. of focus. So, of course, when you feel mentally more tired, then it's much mm-hmm. tougher to play this style of the game. You feel like you are empty. You have mm-hmm. no energy to hit. You feel you have no energy to think. And it's not easy. Like, for me, the most important is like even to be not because even if i feel physically tired Mm -hmm. i still can push myself but if i feel more emotionally emotionally tired Mm -hmm. because maybe after some matches or maybe i don't know i spent so much energy for the mm, stupid things and uh, then i have no energy to play then Mm -hmm. then it's over then it starts to do something do you work on this actively, like the same I'm way you... I'm trying, but I still don't know the way <laughs> it was like this. So you do like a massage. <laughs> uh, that would uh, be nice, yes, no? Yes, uh, and mm-hmm. your mental yeah. energy is a bit more recover, mm-hmm. like your physical will be perfect. Yeah. But still... Yeah, you've always... No, I think you said a couple of times that your your biggest, I don't know how to call it, your less advantage or your less strength, no? maybe it's this more like a mental, mental part no, of, of the yeah, game. Yeah, I would not say mental, I would say to put emotions in the right way because oh, okay. yes. mental part, I would say... You are a fighter. Yes, I not. I don't give up, I try to fight, doesn't mm-hmm. matter who I play, so yeah. I would say, like, if I need to lose, okay, I accept, doesn't matter if... But if I have chance to win, I will also go for it. And Die fighting. Mm-hmm. So in these things, I will not say I have problem mm-hmm. uh, to put emotions in the right way. Yeah. In the right way, that's I have a 
problem and I'm struggling because sometimes I'm too much emotional mm -hmm. and then I'm destroying myself, sometimes opposite. I'm not enough emotional and it's also not working. So I need to find a balance where you can put those emotions that they will help you mm -hmm. keep improving. Yeah, keep because in the end it's good to have emotions, but the problem is to put them in the right mood. And those little moments when I was putting them in the right direction mm -hmm. was amazing. It helps you to achieve better. I don't know. Emotions. You feel that you're just playing amazing, and everything is working. And does it affect you also, like all these emotions that you feel on court, the, the losses? Does it is something that really affects you, of course, or you manage to really separate uh, your professional? Before was affecting a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot. I could be depressed, I don't know, whatever, uh, three days recovering. Mm -hmm. Now I'm tired. <laughs> 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 so it's I, too much, no? It's mm -hmm. too much, so I try at least Kind of, if, I don't know. In the end, the years are passing so fast. So in the end, if you lose, we're losing every week. And in mm -hmm. the end, if you are after every after every week, you're depressed for one week, and there is no moments to enjoy or to live a life. So mm. I try to separate. Okay, yes, of course. I've, when I'm losing, I don't have a good mood. Yeah. But I try to don't at least to don't kill myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's and, a good first step. <laughs> yes, uh, of course, it's tough to have a good mood or something, but... And also, I guess that if after every loss, you doubt about everything and you spend five days where you don't feel like practicing or keep trying, it's no, complicated. No, this uh, I don't have. Ah, so yeah. when you go on court, you're still you're motivated. Fired up to go uh, sometimes I feel opposite, a kind of relief Okay. to me, mm -hmm. to go to practice, to do something that uh, still in my head uh, mm -hmm. or I was you know sometimes after the match you still have points in your head or whatever mm -hmm. and you, you're still thinking oh how I did this or how I did that and if I go to play you kind of uh, I feel like I clean a bit myself mm -hmm. at the end is the, is the best way to avoid that happening again next week no the more you practice the I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if it will be like this I think <laughs> then uh, I won't be hiring because uh, if it will be only about amount how long you practice, but it's not working mm. of hours you spend on court. Do you see yourself as a perfectionist? Yes, for sure. And from one side is good, from another side, I think if you have it in balance, it will be better. Mm -hmm. Because then yeah, it's not really maybe healthy to be perfect, mm -hmm. perfectionist. But maybe it's also what takes, you know... No, that's what I say, for and, sure, yeah. for sure it yeah. helped me a lot. And from one side it's good, but then it's also sometimes destroying your brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. in tennis we cannot control and so everything. <laughs> you need to... It's not like in a closet when you put everything perfect by the color. <laughs> there is more easy to be perfectionist. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so in the end, in tennis you need to find balance because many things is not depending on you mm -hmm. you know the lifestyle is not helping also no with the balance like traveling almost every week uh, actually i'm enjoying ah uh, yes yeah. that's good <laughs> actually i'm enjoying i mean no yeah i'm enjoying to travel mm -hmm. i don't know i've do you find times to enjoy the places you go and do some mm, off this time? This depends, not always, of course, but sometimes, yes. If we have we finished the day earlier, maybe, or if mm -hmm. like I was here in India it was too fast <laughs> and you have one week, yes, you start to have much more free time. But for the moment, opposite, I enjoy a lot to travel and I like it a lot. And especially, I don't know, I was saying this many times, so I have a lot of, not a lot, but I know many people my age and many people younger and older and they, they were studying and they were finishing mm -hmm. with the diplomas and everything and they cannot find mm -hmm. the, the job and they find something is not what they were studying for and the salary is uh, almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So the parents have to help and in the end 
how I can complain about the travel <laughs> when most of the people I know that they cannot even like start to live by their own. Mm-hmm. They still with their parents. We would like to talk about a very inspiring story of yours. It's your foundation and <laughs> Rublo. Yes. First, like congratulations on it because I think it's it's very big yeah. move from you and it's not happening a lot and I'm I'm sure for for all the people you are helping it's a it's a big for the moment I didn't help <laughs> yeah yeah so but the idea is there and it's, the it's already one thing very good is idea, uh, second thing is action yeah it takes time sometimes yes. <laughs> so we'll see hopefully there will be actions <laughs> What was the idea behind all this? Because at the end you dropped the foundation of brand. Well, they're both related, no? Because if I'm not mistaken... I uh, mean, not really. Okay. The first was close. uh, Why you decide to leave your the brand you're working with and start your own brand? (laughs) Can say the truth or no? Oh, I mean... Because I am (laughs) Russian (laughs) and my contract was over. Okay. And so I decided, okay, if I cannot continue, I would. I was thinking a lot in the past to do something with the clothes. How did you feel about like, just because at the end there's more players from Russia, no, that they didn't have any contracts? I don't know if I was feeling okay, I don't know. I okay. say okay, that's what I saw it as an opportunity yeah, to create exactly. your own I saw, I saw it as a good mindset, yeah. yeah. To, to, the opportunity to do something with the clothes and to see at least to give a try and mm-hmm. to feel calm because when it stays in your head and you don't know try or not to try is the worst mm-hmm. then when you try and it not worked and at yeah. least that you feel calm okay yes, yes i did it it didn't work so i tried i know what it is mm-hmm. it's not m- something mine so in the end uh, i saw it like Karolin said as opportunity to do something and I start to do it, but it takes also a lot of effort, a lot of time to prepare everything, to do everything. And then the idea was the first collection to do. And we did all the first collection to do charity. Okay. So all the 100%. To your foundation? Not to my foundation, to the kids in need, but probably I will, because in, in the end, please, mm-hmm. me, so yeah. it will be the same thing. Yeah, the the first collection was the idea is this, mm-hmm. and then I was at least I was planning from the second collection to see if the brand can can work mm-hmm. by himself. Yeah, the thing that you sells will be enough to pay all the workers and mm-hmm. to create new productions mm-hmm. without extra investments or not yeah. to see if the brand can survive by yes. itself. And to see this, that's the after second collection, and then we'll see right. if it will survive by by in himself. The then maybe it makes sense to continue and to do then different projects. And if not gonna survive, then I don't know what I think. It was yeah. a good experience. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was good. I mean, at least after the first collection, that is charity, it was the charity one. Everything went super well, and we didn't expect. You sell only online or? Yes, okay. we sell only online and everything went super well. Mm-hmm. So if it wouldn't be charity project, we would already, yeah. the brand would survive by himself. Yeah. Are you involved on the daily life mm-hmm. of the company or you're too busy with tennis? Sometimes. Okay. It's just to say yes or no. <laughs> like, yes or no. <laughs> yes or no. You look a bit like an artist, no? Are you involved on the creation, the collection? No, no? Uh, f- then uh, I'm going to explode if I need to create something. No, I just yes or no. Okay. Maybe sometimes <laughs> I throw ideas about the design. <laughs> just, uh, and then, okay, you do, you do. You do everything and then, okay or not. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. It's, it's fa- is it fun to have something outside of tennis also? Depends. Depends how you take it. Because if you try to take it something as a serious, maybe then it's tough. Because then you start to care a lot and stuff like that. And in my case, I was like when when before to start everything, I w- I w- I was measuring by only one thing that I'm not trying to win something from it. Mm-hmm. If somehow it will be 
um, started to go well, only perfect, but I didn't have expectations yeah. to win. So mm -hmm. I, I was kind of doing this knowing that I'm just mm -hmm. throwing money like uh, for the toy <laughs> that I want to try. And then the second thing that I was was important to me, if I will start to do all those things and I will have only all possible problems, mm -hmm. like there will be impossible to take materials, impossible to find production, impossible mm -hmm. to find whatever the people to work or something like that. In all these scenarios, if I will be still wanted to keep going, mm -hmm. because many things we want to do as we see the final result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you see something, oh, well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They open a restaurant and it's super nice. I want to do the yeah, restaurant, yeah. you know, we because don't know you, what is behind. Uh, mm -hmm. But you don't know what is behind. So I try to 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 imagine that I have all the worst possible problems. <laughs> and if and if I and if I will okay, I keep going mm -hmm. or I will be no. It's too much, I prefer to stop. Okay. Because sometimes when I'm measuring like this, mm -hmm. for me it's more easy to decide things because I remember what was there was something that I wanted also to do. I don't remember already what, but when I start to imagine the problems that can be, I say no. I will for <laughs> too me much. too much. I don't and I didn't even start. Okay. So I, it was for me like sometimes like this I decide. Mm -hmm. So and that's why for me in the end this kind of now I start to enjoy more. It's yeah. a good experience for sure. Not bad. In the future, at least. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'll see. It. Who knows? You still have a lot of years. I don't know if it's related or not, but I think it's in your Instagram bio. You put play for the kids, play for the light. Yeah. No, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Can you share a bit? What is this? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know and I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, I don't know. I just like comes to my head a long time ago when I just start to put it mm -hmm. even before everything before goals before foundation mm -hmm. I put it I think first somewhere on a camera okay in, in maybe in China or in Cincinnati mm -hmm. yeah. and I put it in maybe one or two more times and then I say wow why why only I put it on a camera why I not just use it as yeah. it's something will be related to me because for me was and it is important uh, the generation the kids uh, the for them to be more kind more humble to have more light because and then most of the people are horrible <laughs> and they are trying to use you so mm -hmm. That's why, I don't know, I felt I can use your position to yeah, inspire others. Yes, just um, for something and maybe it will, course, maybe some people will feel mm -hmm. the same. So that's how we start. And then when we were creating clothes, I said, okay, let's, if I was using mm -hmm. it all, all the time that I was playing, was use it as the main, uh, main tag from the coast. Hmm. So what would you say to uh, a younger kid, 15, 16, trying to make it in tennis or any other sport? What would uh, what advice would you give them? It's tough. <laughs> Everything is very personal. If the person really likes tennis, she's working hard and she's talented and she really feel that she want to play tennis then to be as bad as possible person outside the court mm -hmm. to be as more humble to be as more kind to kill the ego inside of you and that's it. do you find it complicated still like to kill this ego because at the end <clears throat> no. for a lo lot of people maybe don't see you as a human they only see you as this super athlete uh, no, no, because i tried to kill my ego many years already. Just <laughs> for me, I felt I'm. I want to believe, and I feel like my ego is quite low, and I like it a lot because mm -hmm. I don't want 
So, of course, I don't know if it's possible completely to take out the ego or not. For sh- I don't know this, but for sure it's possible to keep it low. And I like a lot that for the mm-hmm. moment I'm able, I'm able to do it because in the end ego only brings bad things. Definitely. Good point. Mm-hmm. And on tour, we can see you very friend with Daniel. <laughs> It's a long time story and okay. is it important for you to have also, um, maybe it's more common, maybe in the men's side? We're opening an interesting topic. You like like always to complicate everything. <laughs> 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 maybe we are. Uh, but it's getting better, I believe. But it's true, it's so surprising it's, from the outside. Like, uh, but on the men's side, it's, it, I mean, it's great to see from the outside those friendship and those good relations and on court. Is it very important for you? Um, I mean, how to this, how this say it? Comes naturally, maybe. Um, yeah, like, I don't really care in a good way. Like, I don't pay attention what I need to do or how I need yeah. to act. It's, I don't really care if uh, somehow we have connection, okay, perfect. If not, I'm not also gonna, how do you say? Forced it. No, not forced it. I'm not gonna try to create any tension or try to look at with a poison or, or <laughs> something like, okay, if I don't have connection, I'm completely rel- relaxed because every person is completely different. Yes. And you cannot, mm-hmm. and doesn't mean that he's bad or you're bad or he's good or you're good everyone is different everyone have his own view of the world his i don't know habits yeah. and it's impossible to to be good with everyone so it's you just kind of let you it go. go with the flow yeah you go with the exactly <laughs> do you like playing against daniel or not uh-huh. you're, you are the godfather of his kid no yeah. so it has to be fun going out there <laughs> I don't know actually when and when we play each other I'm not even doesn't come you can put it aside the friendship yeah. okay. no not the friend I don't know I, I, I didn't even, you don't even think that uh, I'm a godfather I'm not godfather <laughs> but I mean I like to play him but at the deeper stage you will not be happy to see you playing him in a second round of no. their round no? <laughs> yeah I can imagine why <laughs> it's not happening anymore but yeah. you're too good for that but in the deeper stages, yes, because it means that if I arrive to the deep stage, I had a good tournament. So. <laughs> well, next time you talk to him, you can ask him to join us at the podcast. Yeah. We would be super happy to ask him the same same question. What What is your best memory in tennis? Uh, if we talk from pro, for sure, gold, Olympic. In mixed doubles. Yeah, with Nastya Poroshenko. Okay. Uh, Monte Carlo title, maybe my first ever title. If we talk from the pro, if we talk in general from tennis, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. till late in the club, practicing with a grandpa and mom, it was nice moments. Do you have like a very specific goal for the season or mm-hmm. or you just go with the flow, go, try go your best, flow, yes. not a specific goal? Go with the flow and try to your best. put the emotions in the right way. Well, probably it's a healthy way of seeing it instead of obsessing in a, in a long-term result, just giving yourself, giving 100% every day. No, I mean, I know if I will be able to put emotions in the right way, I will have better results. Mm-hmm. So, well, you're still very young, so <laughs> hopefully, yeah. yeah, super interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Andre, for thank your you. time. Thank it was so a much. big pleasure to inviting. have you, and uh, you. good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you for inviting.